Hey, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia, and we want to welcome everybody to our online broadcast worship experience. We thank God for you showing up here today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today. So listen, we want you to do this. We want you to click your likes, your shares, share this with as many people as you can today. There is going to be a word that is being released today, a prophetic word. Um, that is going to be released as well. I truly believe that um, God is dealing with some things, um, just dealing in the area of greater and about the Holy Spirit within, but also the Spirit of God upon us. But also, he's just going to talk about the power. We're going to talk about the power of God today. And so we want you to go ahead and get ready. Go ahead, get your drinks, get your food, sit in front of, get your families together, sit in front of the, the, you know, the TV, the, the computer, wherever you are on your devices. And we're going to enter into this word today and we're going to come in together and hear what thus saith the lord together um, i'm excited about this as i was just spending time in the presence of god i just begin to hear some things that i'm supposed to share with you today and so listen i just want you to get ready get your pens your pads your, your, your whatever devices whatever things you use to document and be ready to hear what thus saith the lord to hear what the spirit of god is saying to you to receive it to hear it, but also to receive it. So we want to welcome all of our first time viewers. Uh, we just thank God for you. On behalf of my wife, Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to Spirit of Our Fellowship. We thank God for you showing up here and supporting us today. And like I said before, I truly believe that it's not by chance that you're listening and watching it. So don't turn it, don't tune it, don't turn to something else. Listen, listen, lock in, get ready. Spirit of Our Fellowship people, go ahead, share it with your, um, your friends. Um, let them know we are on and the word is going forth. So, hey, um, I'm ready to jump into this today. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity for me to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind to bring wisdom and knowledge and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach the holy written word reverently. We thank you for the um, word entering on the inside of us, that it brings light and enlightenment to us. I pray that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you. We thank you for it. Now, we covet the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as the teacher, as the comforter, as the guide, as the one ready to give us peace, revealing unto us the mysteries of the kingdom of God, the heart of the Father towards us, his children. And so, Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I'm going to say welcome again. Um, if I could give a title to this, we're dealing in our series entitled Greater. Um, it's based off of John 14, uh, when Jesus talks about greater work shall we do because he's going to the Father. And we talked about the Spirit of God within developing character and strength. But I told you that once we come out of that, we're going to talk about the Spirit of God upon us. And so if I could give a title to this today, I want to call I want to call it dress for success, dress for success, understanding the power of God upon your life and what it will do. And so that the first thing I want to uh, deal with is that the power of God is so vitally important for our victory in every area of our lives. One thing I realize is um, our intellect can only get us but so far and we need the power of God to intervene in certain situations that we come across in our lives. And so I believe that the power of God is going to begin to manifest even as I'm preaching. Wherever you are, I need, to, I need for you to get your expectation up today. I need you to be ready to receive today because the Spirit of God is going to speak some things directly to you as I'm preaching. And whatever notes you're taking, you need to take the notes as to what is God saying to you. Not just what I'm saying, but what is he saying directly to you and what are you hearing? And so it's going to be important. I'm going to start here in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And it reads, and I, brethren, came, um, when I came to you, this is Paul speaking here, I came to you 
not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So Paul understood, it's not my own wisdom that I'm coming to you. It's not my own excellency of speech. You know, intellect can't deliver and set you free. You need the power of God manifesting in your life um, to see this, to see freedom come to the degree that it needs to come. There's some things, and the Spirit of God was dealing with me. He said, there's some people who are dealing with some things and they need my power to show up. And I need for them to believe that I can come and rearrange and change things and that things can turn around for the good and for their better and for their good. And so now the book of Daniel says this, the book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. And it says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt, uh, uh, shall he corrupt by flatterers. But watch this. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And we understand that without God, we can't do what we need to do in this earth. And so we need to trust him. We need to depend on him. We need to rely on him. I'm ready to jump into this thing, but I'm trying to lay this foundation real quick. In the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, out of the Amplified Version. And it reads, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are blameless towards him. So we got to understand God is seeking people that he wants to show himself strong on your behalf. People need to see God move in your life. They need to see God manifest in your life. They need to see things turn around. Not, it's not just about you, but it's about the people around you and that the people that are watching you. There are people that are rooting for you. So listen, sometimes we so, we're so busy talking about people who are against us, but God is saying that there are more people for you than you realize and that people need to see you come out of this situation. They need to see you elevate. They need to see you increase. They need to see you free. They need to see you happy. And he says, that's going to bring joy. That's going to be, bring glory to my name. When you are glorified, when things begin to work well in your life, God says, I will get the glory out of it. And it'll cause men, it'll cause women, it'll cause children, it'll cause your co-workers to now come into the marvelous life. It'll cause them to be drawn to me as you begin to excel. And God says, my power is available. My power is available. I want to read something real quick. Um... It's kind of like God, I feel like God kind of calling an audible a little bit, just a little bit. In Isaiah 60, and I had this written down, and I felt like the Spirit of God was going to want me to go to it. In Isaiah chapter 60, and this is our um, foundational scripture here at the ministry. And we come out of Isaiah chapter, uh, chapter 60 in verses 1 through 5, but a lot of times we really lock into verse 1. When it says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Now, I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version, the, the classic Amplified Version. It says this. It says, Arise. In other words, get up from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. He says, I need for you to get up from the depression and the prostration in which the circumstances that you have gone through have kind of held you down. God is saying, get up. He's telling you to wake up. He's telling you to come alive again. He's telling you, I need for you to get up now and to begin to move forward because Satan is trying to depress you. He's trying to oppress you. And who I'm talking to right now, I'm talking to believers right now. I'm talking to some people right now that you are going through some things that now that Satan has so worn you down mentally and even physically that he's trying to suck the life out of you. 
But God says, I need for you to breathe life into people this day. There is somebody that is watching that is somebody I kept hearing and I kept sensing and feeling that there is somebody who feels like they're, they're at the end of their rope, that there is no more hope. And so Satan, what he is doing is he is wearying you in your mind to cause you to give up on what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Because if you give up in this situation, then that means you're about to give up on your destiny. And so if he can rob you of your joy, he can rob you of your destination. And God's saying this, I do not want to let one more person leave this planet without fulfilling what I created them to do. And so God is saying this, I need for you to begin to speak life over them. I need for you to begin to speak peace over them. I need for you to come against the demonic forces, the principalities and the powers that have come and tried to attack their house, attack their mind and attack their bodies. And so I come to you today. I come to you under the prophetic unction of the Holy Ghost. I come unto you right now with the demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in man's wisdom, but in God's power. Counseling can only get you but so far sometimes. Sometimes you just need an intervention of the Holy Ghost to interrupt and disrupt things and to tear things down and to cause things to be torn down in your life. And so now you got to see and you got to know what God is saying and what God is doing and what he's revealing this day. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now watch this. <laughs> I want to I want to take you somewhere. I'm going to go to the book of Luke chapter 18. I mean, chapter four, verses 18 through 19. Come on. We're going we're to do this thing today. We're going to do this. I'm going I'm to I'm preach this thing and drop the mic on you. We're going to do this thing today because Satan has done this for too long. And as I begin to pray and as I begin and he, God began to show me some things. Um, let me read this first. And then I'm going to tell you, <laughs> he says this. Now, this is Jesus. Now, when he comes out of the wilderness, he opens up the Bible and he finds the place that it was written. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Luke 4, 18 through 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And this is out of the Amplified Version. Because he has anointed me. He has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, who are bruised, who are crushed, who are broken down by calamity. He says to proclaim the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. He's saying this, and watch this, just like Jesus is anointed, and we're a part of his body, I declare and decree to you today that I am anointed. The spirit of the Lord is up on me, is upon me to preach to you. He has anointed me. He has anointed me to preach your deliverance, to preach good news, the gospel to the poor. What's good news to a poor man? That you don't have to be poor anymore. That there has been power that's been released to bring you out of pro poverty into prosperity and increase. He also says he has sent me to announce. He has sent me to announce. I'm your announcer today. I'm here to announce your release. I'm here to announce your release from captivity and recovery of sight to the blind. Now, God brought this before me. He says, and he just, it's like that word recovery. It's like to bring you back to the rightful view that you used to have. And God is saying, you've forgotten who you are. You've forgotten what I've called you to do. You've forgotten what I've already delivered you from. And so now you're thinking the thing you're going through is bigger than what I've already brought you out of. He says the same God that delivered you, the same God that set you free, can surely change and rearrange the situations around you right now. And you must believe it in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Also, God says some of you have dumbed down in your vision and you have settled for less. You have settled for what has already happened because so much time 
has come and gone, and you have yet to see the fulfillment of what it is I spoke unto you. So now you've begun to settle, and now you've used the word contentment, but God says it's been complacency. And now he's saying this, I need you to awaken the sleeping giant in you again. He says, come up and dream again. I don't care if you're in your 60s or 70s, and you're in your 50s or 40s. He says, there is something I placed in you that I'm trying to bring out of you because this earth needs it. I need it. Society needs it. Humanity needs it. Culture needs it. And I've created you for this thing. And he says, it shall come to pass. So he says, wake up now. Wake up now. Get up now. I'm ready. I'm, I'm trying to preach this thing like I want to. I'm ready to let go, boy. My goodness. Watch this. He says this. He says, recovery of sight to the blind. Your vision is coming back. Remember in the, in, um, when, when Samson, I think it's in the book of Judges, when Samson, who had supernatural strength upon his life, and it was tied into his hair, and then Delilah began to deceive him and tried to seduce him to find out the source of his strength. And when she found the source of his strength, she stripped him of that strength. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength, and that's what Satan tries to do. He tries to zap your strength. But watch this. Right after she zapped his strength, the first thing they did was plucked out his eyes. That means they took his vision from him. And that's what Satan is trying to do. He tried to zap your joy so he can take your strength, so he can get your vision, so that you can't see her anymore. And that's what God is saying. He's about to recover what you can no longer see. And you're about to see again. You're about to dream again. God is going to visit you again. And I'm telling you, I feel the power of God upon me. I feel the anointing of God on this word today. That is, listen, you didn't need another intellectual message. He says, don't preach out your head, preach out of your spirit. And now whatever it is that God is going to bring deliverance, he is bringing freedom, he is bringing you out of captivity, and you are already free in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Whoo. Glory to God. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Interact with me. Come on, type. Give me some amens out there. I don't know where you are. I can't see you, but I know that you're there. Glory to God. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, he says the anointing is upon me. There is something different and something more powerful that happens when you preach under an anointing versus out of your intellect. I'm telling you, God is saying preach this thing in season and out of season because I need to refresh my people. I need their vision to come back again. I need them to see again. These are people who have been downtrodden. You have been depressed and you have been oppressed. You born again. You love God. But it's like, Lord, I need something to happen now. I need things to turn around now. I need a supernatural door open now. And God is saying, can you believe me? Because your belief is going to be the open door to your reality. If you can believe all things are possible to him that believe. Listen, you can do all these things, but you, if you don't believe it, you're going through the motions, but do you believe it? You are saying confessions, but do you believe it? God is saying, I need you to believe. See, that is the thing. God, listen, God has the way. Sometimes it's the strangest things that God uses. He'll use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I was watching a movie just last night with my son, and there was something about this thing. And it was this, this, this inventor who lost his vision. He lost his drive. He used to have all of this stuff, this creative power and this creative ability. He could see things beyond what others could see. But then something bad happened to them. Somebody betrayed him and it took his joy and it took his energy. And all of a sudden it had to take somebody around him to believe in him again because he no longer believed in himself. And watch this. One of his greatest inventions, one of his greatest inventions would only work when you believe, and it was the thing, all of the mechanisms were there. Everything seemed to be in place, but he didn't believe. And once somebody came around that thing that believed, it came alive. And that's what God is saying. The vision is there. The dream is there, but you got to believe again. So that thing can come alive in you again. God says, I need for it to come alive in you again. And it shall come to pass. He says, I'm speaking to somebody right now that that dream needs to come alive again. It needs to come alive again, and you need to see again. And God is going to do that thing again in you. Glory to God. Now watch this. Whoo, hallelujah. Let's see, this is the word of the Lord. That same spirit in Romans 8 and 11. He says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, huh, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells on the inside of you. 
Listen, I'm telling you, God is going to quicken you by the Holy Spirit within you. The deep is calling unto the deep. I'm calling forth that dream that's in you. I'm calling forth that seed that's been planted in you. I'm calling forth that vision that's been planted in you. It needs to come forth now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, God is saying this. There is freedom. There is victory and there is wholeness that's there. I mean, oh God, I tell you, we are getting to a place where the power of God is about to be manifested in such dramatic and demonstrating ways. Yes, there are certain things. I'm talking about the supernatural, but also the spectacular is about to come to play. You're about to be visited by angels like you've never seen before, that there are going to be angelic forces that are going to begin to manifest themselves at an accelerated rate because God is saying, whether it's in the dream realm or in the natural realm, where you have open visions, where you're in your right mind, you're in your right consciousness, and you will begin to see things open up by the Spirit because the Spirit of seeing and knowing is about to manifest and you're about to see things to accelerate you to the place that you should have always been. And God is going to back up his vision. God is going to co-write. He's going to now, yeah, yeah, he's going to underwrite. That's the word. He's going to underwrite the vision that he told you to do. And so you need to begin to step out on faith. You need to begin to step out on what God told you to do. You got to step out on it. When you step out, you're going to begin to see the miraculous power of God manifested like never before. And God is saying this, if you can believe again, come on, man of God, come on, woman of God. If you can dream again, your children are dependent on you. They are watching to see what you do. You've been preaching Jesus all this time. Now you need to demonstrate Jesus now. And he's saying this, that people need to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Your time, listen, you, you, I rebuke the spirit of suicide to try to take you out of here because you feel hopeless and the hope in the life of God is coming back in you again in Jesus name. I don't know who I'm talking to. I declare in Jesus name that you will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And I rebuke every demonic force that has been attacking your mind, that has been attacking your body, that has been attacking your family. Now in Jesus name, you have authority. You have victory. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you in Jesus name, in Jesus name. I ain't playing no games with Satan this morning. I ain't playing no games with him any longer. I rebuke that oppressive spirit that's been upon your life. I rebuke that demonic force that's been attacking your body. Get out of them now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Whoo! Glory to God. Yeah, yeah, wherever you are, if sickness and disease is going on, lay hands on your body in that area. Whatever it is, call healing forth now from the inside out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, the Holy Spirit, he quickens your body, he makes you alive, and he helps you to stop sinning. He helps you to stop doing the thing that you've been trying to stop doing for years. There is freedom at hand. There is deliverance at hand. I'm here to announce your freedom. I'm here to announce the spirit of fire. I'm here to announce it every partner and supporter. I'm here to announce it every person under the sound of my voice that I announce your freedom. I announce your victory. I announce your, announce your wholeness now. You have come out into your good place. You have come out of that desolate place. You have come into this good land, into this good life that God has already prearranged and made ready for you to live. In Jesus' name, I declare it and I decree it. Thus saith the Lord, and it is so. And it is so, glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. I'm telling you now, the power of God is present. The power of God is present. There is no distance in the spirit. This word is going through this broadcast. This word is going, coming out of your, the devices into your physical, you sensing the tangible presence of God. Some of you are crying right now because God is dealing with you. That oppressive thing is leaving you now. It cannot stand under the power of God. Hey, glory to hey, cool, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Ooh, glory, 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 glory. Your belief is going to be important. Your belief is going to be key. Ah, glory, glory, oh, glory to God. I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus that God's glory shall be upon me. Yeah, 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 receive it. Yeah, receive it now. Receive it, receive it, receive it. 
receive it. Glory to God. There's an interesting thing that God, I'm going to deal with this part real quick. And I'm going to just drop it and let it go. I'm telling you, the power of God, I couldn't, oh man. God was dealing with me as I was preparing for this. All of a sudden, I began to think about some things. All of a sudden, my mind started to drift in some areas. And then before I knew it, my emotions start going with where my mind was going. All of a sudden, I said, it's like snap yourself back into place. And God showed me in that moment. And he's told me this before, and I've shared it with people. He says, this is what's happening to a lot of people. They are intoxicated with memories, negative memories, which is affecting their emotions. And they are so consumed what's happening in their mind that they have been stagnant and stuck in the place thinking it's a way that it really not is. That is really not. He said, now when you begin to meditate on a thing, it becomes reality to you. So whatever it is, you need to now see. God says, I need for you to shift and renew your mind. And this is what I did. I said, wake up. Come on. It's like snapped out of it. It was almost like, what in the world? How did I even start drifting there? Then all of a sudden, God says, this is what's happening with my people. Satan is luring them. That's what temptation is, to lure, to draw. He says he's drawing people in their minds. And before they know it, they are so intoxicated with what they're going through and dealing with that they are blind to see the realities and the possibilities that are before them. That's why they can't see their way out, because they're so drunk with what they're going through at the moment. And God is saying... I want you to preach recovery of sight to them now. Recovery of sight. I, com Ooh, I command you to come out of that drunken state. Glory to God. Remember, the Bible says that, listen, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You need to be sober in your right mind. You need to see what God is saying. Now, I, gotta, now I need to settle down real quick, and I need to show something in you real quick. As I begin to look in the book of Luke 4, this is what Jesus now has been led. Now, this is an interesting thing. When the Spirit of God came upon him and when he was baptized in the river Jordan, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. So I start seeing some things here about the wilderness experience out of the book of Luke 1 through 13. Now, in this, in this wilderness, Jesus was tempted three times by Satan. And I preached on this before in some areas, but not exactly like this. Because some of you are trying to figure out, God, why am I still in this wilderness state? I feel as though I'm doing X, Y, Z, but I still haven't come into the fullness of what I've seen. Now watch this. The role, and, and I gotta, I, I gotta give, a, I gotta give a shout out to this. I can't take credit for it. I be, I learned this from a man of God, and I was like, whoa, this is good. I give him a shout out, John Maxwell. But I begin to see some things here. And the role of the wilderness in preparation in the life of an individual can't be overemphasized. Both Luke and Matthew record Jesus' time in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry. And Jesus spent 40 days alone in a desert place, abstaining from food and noise and distraction. Both gospel writers tell us this was a time ordained by the Holy Spirit. Now, this, this is important. What happens when, I, I know this ain't a popular thing, but what happens when the Holy Spirit ordains something or leads you into something, but now at the same time, everything is not God-led or inspired, but we have to take and maximize the opportunity when it presents itself. If you're in a crisis, it ain't no use in wasting the crisis because you're in it already. And so there's some things that God wants to develop in you in the midst of you, watch this, not just going through, but growing through it. He wants you to grow through what you're going through. Now watch this. So what happens to people in this wilderness season? Luke gives us a hint. 
Number one, we recognize that God will lead us into seasons of growth and not gratification. Seasons of growth where now he is now trying to develop something in you for where he's taking you to. Because you, you, you think that with the vision and with the destination would not come some level of opposition from your enemy, the wicked one. And you got to see it for what it is. That the thing that you've gone through, oh, come on now. If God, ooh, the fact that you're going through it is an indication that you can come out of it. Because God has given you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. I know that pain has been hitting your body for a while, but by his stripes, the Bible says you are already healed. And what he is waiting for you to do is to arise and shine and to recognize, wait a minute, I am the heal protecting my health from sickness and disease. So sickness, you get out of my body now. I speak life to you, body, and the same spirit, the same, oh, I feel, oh, I feel my priest coming on. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken my mortal body and make it alive. So body, come alive now. I command you to come alive. I command you to be strengthened. Whatever it is you're going through, you have been empowered by the spirit of God to come out of that thing. Whew. I keep hearing this term, the refiner's fire. The refiner's fire. Whew. What is now happening is this is an opportunity for you to finally get rid of things that have hindered you from walking into the fullness of your destiny. He said, this is the final exam. Glory, glory. Whoo. Whoo. I feel the weight of that. He said, this is the final exam and you need to come out of this thing now. And you rise up and you begin to declare and to decree that this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in these last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And now there's prophetic utterances going forth. And I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that you're going to come out as pure gold. Yeah. If you don't believe in you, I believe in you. I believe in you. Rise, man of God. Rise, woman of God. Take your rightful place. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. Number two thing that we see in this temptation, this wilderness, that we fight battles and overcome temptations <laughs> to take shortcuts. That we have to fight battles and overcome temptations, to, like the temptation to take a shortcut. Some of you try, you just want the pain to be relieved, but you don't realize that it's going to be by you exercising your authority that that pain is alleviated. That is like, see, some of you God has brought you out of without you having to do anything. See, he only does that when you're in infancy stage. Some of you have developed enough where you know more than what you're exercising right now. And that's why God just not bringing you out of it. What he's telling you to do is you need to now hope. Mm. You need to bring yourself out of what I've already delivered you from. Glory to God. Woo. He said, now you got to enforce your authority. You have to enforce your freedom. You have to enforce what the blood of Jesus has already provided. You have to enforce it. <laughs> Number three, we learn the discipline and the art of depending on God. The discipline and the art of depending on God. See, you tried it your way. How that working out for you? God says, now you're going to have to do it my way. You're going to have to follow my word. You're going to have to exercise my principles. You're going to have to exercise my laws. And you're going to have to realize that you are where you are because of you. Ooh, I know that's strong. He says, watch this. Oh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. The same way you got in it is the same way you coming out of it. Your mouth got you in it, and your mouth going to bring you out of it. You begin to speak things that establish that thing in your life, and you didn't realize it that you were speaking the problem, 
versus speaking the promise. He says, if you begin to reverse engineer and you begin to speak life to what seems dead to you, it will come alive again and it will grow again and you will begin to see things. Oh, I hear this. I hear a transition now. There's somebody now that you're stepping out on things and you've been stepping out on some things in business. There, I'm seeing a person in particular, but I'm just speaking it out loud. You've been stepping out on some things and you have not seen it to the degree in which the vision has been there where your business is concerned. And God is saying this. He says, there is a new strategy I'm about to do because there are people oh, huh, that you connected to that you thought would get you to that place. But God is saying this, there's something about partnerships, but God is saying, I've been wanting to show you all along that I could do it for you if you trust me. And sometimes you're going to have to know who to connect with, who not to connect with. That's all I can say about that. Glory to God. Mm. Because you got to trust him. Because you keep thinking it's only going to be this way or this is the only way I can see it getting done. God is saying this, did I not create the heavens and the earth? Can I, can I not give you a building? Can I not give you the people to fill the building? Can I not be the one to give you the accountant to help you handle the money and to give you the people? See, you need, see, oh, but they're they, they going. This, see, what's happening is you no longer, you're the person that don't need vision. You need strategy. And so God is giving strategies, divine strategies, divine strategies he's dropping for you to see how to come out into what it is he's called you to do. And God is revealing unto you now, even by his spirit, he is going to show you things, some things he's already shown you, but you got to write it down, make it plain, and then say, God, help me to execute what I'm seeing. And he will give you wisdom. He will show you things. He will bring people across your path to help you expedite the process because your new plan and your action your whole is coming through so fast. I got to slow down. Your new strategy is going to expedite your process now. And when now the new strategy he's about to give you is going to be part of your acceleration process. And so God spoke at the beginning of this year. I know what's been going on, but I still been holding God up to that word that he spoke to me, that this will be a year of clarity. This will be a year of the supernatural, and this will be a year of acceleration. And God is saying things that it should have taken you yet, bre, that should have been done years ago. He can begin to realign it in a matter of months and moments, and you will begin to see great momentum coming out of this year into this new season and this new year. No matter what's been going on in the earth, the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our God, and God is going to cause you to be elevated even in the midst of the world being in a pandemic situation where fear and torment is going on. You're going to be the person who arises and shines for your life has come and the glory of the Lord. No, now I feel like I could finish reading the rest of this. It's come upon you. The rest of Isaiah says it like this. For behold, verse 2, Isaiah 62. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem, upon you, O spirit of fire, upon you, O man and woman of God. And his glory shall be seen on you and nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. You are being lifted up. Yeah, yeah, lift it up. Yeah, lift up your eyes round about you and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be carried. Yeah, yeah, and nursing the arms. I see it, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in business, God knows where the people are who need what you have to offer and to give. And God will bring your clientele to you and bring you across your clientele. And God knows the people that will support you. God knows the people that will celebrate you. God knows the people that will appreciate you. And you're about to come into that place where you're no longer tolerated, but celebrated. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And people are going to receive your gift. Receive your talent, receive your ability, receive your anointing and glory. To, I'm telling you, you better, man, you better shout. Somebody better shout with me right now. Glory to God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Now watch this. Yeah. 
He says this, then you shall be radiant and your heart shall thrill and tremble and be with joy at the glorious deliverance, the glorious deliverance, the glorious deliverance, the glory, glory, glory. I hear it'll be better than it ever was before. It'll be better than your wildest dreams. God said there's great joy coming to you. 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 You're going to smile again. You're going to laugh again. You're going to dream again. You're going to rejoice again. Glory to God. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Man, who go? Boy, man, I ain't had a running spell in a minute. But I feel the power of the Almighty God upon me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The Lord is the strength of your life. And this is your new season. This is your new day. This is your set time in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody shout at me. Type amen. Type amen. Type it quick. Amen. I receive it, prophet. I receive it, man of God. Type it. I receive 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 it. And I believe it. Glory to God. Whoo. <clears throat> now watch this. Okay. I'm going back to the wilderness situation. I'm coming out of Isaiah. I'm going back to Luke again. He's talking about those key things that God wants to show us in this wilderness season, the wilderness situation that you're going through. Number four, watch this. After you learn the art of discipline and depending in the art of depending on God. Now we are broken of self-sufficiency and self-promotion. See, it's not about you. It's, about, it's not about your self-sufficiency. It's about you depending on him, trusting him. He says he's removing and eliminating all pride. All pride. Yeah, that's the brokenness that you're going through now. It's getting rid of the selfishness and the pride that you've been experiencing. Pride comes before a fall. God hates a proud look. Yeah, he hates a proud look. Now, you need to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Say, Lord, I need you in this situation. Come help me, Lord. Show me what to do. This goes into the next thing. Watch this. It's to help us solidify our sense of mission. Some of what you're going through is what you're going to. Let me say that again. Some of what you're going through is what you're going to. Part of it is part of your destiny. See, I know what it's like because God called me to teach people who they are. So there were times in my life where the enemy tried to attack my identity because God wanted me to see and to rise up above it. And he brought me, glory to God, he brought me out through that thing to preach. That's why I'm so solid now who I am. All glory, because that's what he called me to do. And yes, he says there are things that I allowed you to go through to teach you and to train you. But my hand has been upon you all this time. Glory to God. He says there are things you've gone through, but I've been with you all the whole way. I've been with you the whole way. And I told the enemy, yes, yes, the enemy. Ooh, even like he went after Job. And he says, now the enemy, even with Peter, Jesus told him that Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. But some of you, Satan required that he came for you. And God says, you cannot touch their life. He says, because I believe in them, because I know what I put in them. And God is saying this, you've been through it. And God said, I brought you out of it and you are coming out stronger because that's what happened with Jesus. When he came out of the wilderness, the Bible says he came out in the power of the spirit. Glory to God. And God is saying you have come out and you are coming out with such power and with such glory that you're going to gain a new perspective as you've gone through this thing now. And God is preparing you for what he's created you for. And this is your season. This is your time, thus saith the Lord. And you will walk in the fullness of it. You will walk in the victory of it. And it'll be as though you never went through what you went through. For the smell of smoke shall not be upon thee. And you shall come out of it in the refiner's fire as pure gold. And there will be great rejoicing. Glory to God. And the end shall come. And God says, as I've glorified my church, have I not said, as I glorify them. And as I come, I'm coming for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such blemish. For I'm getting the wrinkles and the blemishes out of your life, thus saith the Lord. 
for I'm preparing my bride for my return. And there have been things that you prayed for. There have been things that you confessed. There have been things that you sold for. There have been things that you believe for. And this is your time to put it on, to begin. He says, begin to move in those arenas. Begin to move in areas I've been commanding you. Begin to move. And as you step, I'm going to show. As you step, I'll reveal. As you step, I'll manifest. And you'll begin to see it. Thus saith the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Whew. Your release. Your release is here. Your release is here. Your release is here. Your release is here. Glory to God. Your release is here. Your release is here. Your release is here. Your release is here. Le rubash de crece de cumbra. Your release is here, glory to God. I speak it. The thing that has hounded you for years has been removed from you. The mistakes of the past will no longer hound you. Oh, Bresh de Kunda. Yes, Satan will try, but you'll allow the joy of the Lord to shine forth. Yeah, glory to God. And you will laugh at him, literally. And say, ha, 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 you thought you had me, you fool. You have nothing on me. Don't you be afraid of the devil. He is a defeated foe. I receive that, Lord. And your name shall wax great in the earth. Glory to God. Glory to God. A great name. Yeah, God promised Abram, I'll make your name great. Who he wants you to receive that he'll make your name great. Glory to God. Yeah, Bruno, I know the body of Christ is taking blows and hits, but there is a generation rising up that will go forth. Huh? I didn't ask you to be flawless, but faithful. And as you're faithful, <laughs> Ooh, that's good. Oh, God, that's good. Oh, that's good. Some of you so worried about being flawless that you're not being faithful, that you're, it's hindering you because you think you got to have everything together before you move forward. And that's what's been hindering you. Here, it's been your heart for me that's hindered you. Whoa. It's been your heart to try to have it so perfect and so in place for me that you've failed to move forward in some areas. God says, I just need your mobility and I'll cover the rest. I'll cover the rest. And I'll teach you along the way. And I'll show you what you need to do. And there'll be such a time where there's, oh man, glory to God. Whoo, Jesus. Whoo, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Shorema. He says, don't let your past hinder you. Move in it. Because there are people waiting for you to show up. They're waiting on you. They are waiting on you. They are waiting on you. I knew that God says there will be a heavy anointing on you to deal with things that people have been dealing with. And some have put on the mask and they've tried to have a mental ascent to this thing, but they got to believe and they got to trust me. So teach them how to believe me. Believe, believe the Lord your God. Oh, yeah. Believe the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. When you believe, it establishes you in that thing. I believe. I believe. I am who I am through the grace of God. Glory to God. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now receive. Glory to God. Lift up your hands and receive wherever you are. Receive, receive, receive. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Acceleration. Accelerated favor. That's how I hear it. Accelerated favor. Accelerated favor. Oh, big It's not going to be as hard as you thought it would be. There are going to be many. There will be a there will be such an ease to some things. 
the reason why you never stepped up to it was because you thought it was going to be harder than what it's actually going to be. And God is saying, if you just show up, I'll show up. Glory to God. Whew. I don't know about y'all. I, I receive that thing. I receive that thing. This is one of those words you got to go back and hear it again and again and again and get it in your spirit. Out of the heart, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Some of you have been speaking. I said this Thursday night. You've been speaking out of your head, but not out of your heart. For what it is you're believing for. You've been speaking out of your heart, but it's been the negative thing for some of you. And that's why the negative situation has hung around and gotten worse is because you've enforced it with the words of your mouth. And God is saying, I need to get some new information in you. I need to give a, I need to get a new belief system in you. For with God, all things are possible to him that believe. Is there, I think Isaiah says it like this. Is there anything too hard for God? There is such a power that God wants to release through us. Peter tapped into it where he defied gravity and walked on water. I believe Philip, the evangelist, was translated from one place to another. We have seen, we have not seen some of these things, folks. And there is a great awakening that is taking place in the body of Christ where the charis charismatic, the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit wants to manifest and illuminate things to us and through us. And we're going to be getting, oh, if I said some of the things I'm seeing, some of you would think I was crazy. He's trying to get us to a place, folks, where you just let go and allow the power to shine forth. Well, you just let go and allow God to be God in you and th through you. Satan is the God, little g, of this earth and this earth system. But you have been elevated and seated above him in heavenly places. And there are systems and superstructures in this earth that have to come down. And there are some things that are about to take place. He says, but I don't need you to be so focused on what the world is doing that you are now not focusing on what I've told you to do. There is a great awakening coming, and now is. Well, the sons of God are about to be manifested in such a phenomenal way. Well, there are people that I could breathe upon. I just, I saw a glimpse of it. I'm, this stuff is flowing. It's not just God breathing upon us but us breathing upon this culture. When we breathe, see, you got to know who you are. You are a carrier of the breath and the life and the power of God. When we show up, things happen. When we show up, we change and rearrange things. And the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob shall manifest. And we shall see. And we shall see. <laughs> My glory manifested unto thee. Ah. Glory. 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 Yeah. I say it as simple as this. If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. I know primarily the people who are watching are those who are believers. But I'm believing for some unsaved folk to watch us. I want some people that's going to get born again. I want to I want to see growth and increase by conversion. I want to see us get folks saved. I want to see us get people developed in Christ and who they are as believers. And I, we're going to see this thing. And I'm doing it by faith. 
if you're here watching. There might be somebody who just sneaked on out of the blue. And you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I want you to now confess this right now after me. The power of God is already present to deliver, set free, make whole in any area. I told you. I told you in the beginning. Things are happening. Things are happening. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Say, come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I yield my life to you. I make you the Lord of my life. Now fill me with your spirit. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Flow through me. Breathe through me. Live in me. Manifest yourself to me. Give me the ability to speak with other tongues to magnify God and to bring glorification in my life. Now receive now in Jesus' name. Come on. Yes, yeah, some of you now. Whether it's now or whether it's later, the power of God is flowing. Begin to pray. Come on. Some of y'all are like, what is happening? It's the power of God. The glory of God rising up in you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, I'm keep saying super. Oh, oh, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Folks, there's so much going through me right now. So much I'm seeing. So much I'm seeing. This image keeps popping up in me. And I always see, sometimes we don't realize Hollywood got some things because they're creative people that God has placed there to bring images that bring reflections of some things that he wants to do in us and through us. There's this movie called X-Men. And in, I think this final, one of the final X-Men movies this woman by the name of Jean, who has, who is the greatest of all, the X-Men. She has, I mean, her power surpasses everybody's. But she kept things locked in because the person who was teaching her was really afraid that the power would consume her and she wouldn't know how to handle it. It comes a point, and it came a point where they had to tell her, Jean, let go. And I keep seeing it was like, and it reminded you of the fire of the Holy Spirit. When the Phoenix came out of her and I saw, when I saw it, it looked so much like, oh my God, that's the fire of God. That's the power of God and how you want to demonstrate through us. There is such power contained in our spirit being that in this earth realm, if, if, whoo, if it was fully revealed, it's almost like what God is doing he is renewing our minds so that we can properly release from our spirit. And when the spirit and the soul get to the place where it's so aligned, that there will be things that you will see in this physical world that will astound you. I'm telling you, the power is present. The power, Rishakumbre, is present. Victoria, the power, is present. I hear that name. Victoria is watching. Well, I don't know what. The power is present within you. Sherubish Alokumbra, to flow out of you and to quicken your mortal body and to make it so alive. The power is present within you to see into the future. For did not the Spirit of God say, did not the Word of God say that the Holy Spirit will show you things to come? That you won't have to be caught off guard by anything? Eboshata, mokomata. Yeah, should I say? No. But God is saying, God is going to manifest to you and through you and for you. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Shote kamasete. Shote kamasete. Shote kamasete. 
help me, Lord, with this because I want to share something. Glory to God. God is saying he's about to, yeah. If you're watching, Alicia, the Lord says he's about to manifest himself to you. He's going to reveal himself to you. Get ready. You're about to encounter the power of God. And it is going to radically transform your life. I saw that thing. And I mean the fire of God. There's going to be such a fire that come out of you, girl. My God in heaven. You talking about a preaching machine. You talking glory. Whoo, glory to God. Y'all excuse me. Whoo. Glory to God. The fire of God. For have not I said that not one word will come? <laughs> I will hold you accountable to one every idle word that comes out of your mouth. Yeah, 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 Lord. Glory to God. Yeah, the boofy she did get there. Parents, don't you ever think that your prayers are not heard by God? I'm I'm a blessed man. My children are blessed. My wife is blessed. Our family is blessed. I'm just thankful. Glory to God. God is a good God. And he wants to do you good, man. This is such a season of the end. I'm going to have to get ready to stop. I just, it's all over me. This is a season of the end suddenly. But there will be sudden things happening for you people. I mean, sudden manifestations of glory, sudden spikes of increase. Boom, spike here, there, and there. Receive it, receive it. Okay, I see, he calling. Bro, I hear your name too. He says, God says, you about to see. There's about to be a shift and a move in your life. Moving. There's about to be a shift in the move. Who? I, I can't say everything. I won't be presumptuous in nothing. He said, there's something that's about to hit in your life. Girl, you get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. He says, your son will be well taken care of. And I just hear that. Just as clear. Don't worry about him. He will be well taken care of. You just need to be at peace about that so you can make decisions that you need to make. He will be well taken care of, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Glory. Whew. All right. Ah, glory. See? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Go, baby. She did go back. This is the coma. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. I said, Antoine. The Spirit of God says to you, sir, you've been faithful. You've been faithful over the little. He says, I've seen your faithfulness in private. For your heart is pure towards me, said the Lord. So I'll begin to elevate you. And I'll begin to manifest things on your behalf because of your heart towards me. And you'll see things come to pass. And there'll be great joy in your household. And there'll be great joy. I see you just laughing and enjoying life, enjoying your children, enjoying your family. And there'll be great joy. It's like, and you're just happy. And people will say, man, why are you so happy all the time? And you'll just be like, God is good. And you'll just enjoy life. And that will be such a ministry to people around you. You just say, God is good. <laughs> I did what he said, and I saw the results. God is good. And there, that'll be your ministry to people. Your pulpit is just life. And people, you just going to come across and just minister to them. And you, you begin, there'll be just great joy, man. That's what I see. I see, I just see great joy. In you. Hallelujah. Ha hallelujah. Whew. All right, folks. There's some information on your screen that if you want to connect with this ministry, 
If you believe God has called you to be submitted to this house and say, man, I want to connect with you guys, be a partner or be a member. We call our members partners here, that we're all in this together. If that's you, you say, listen, I don't have a church home. I feel the leading of the spirit of God to connect with you. Just follow the instructions, go to the connect card, fill it out. Let us know. We'll have someone from our staff contact you. Also, at this time, we want to just give opportunity for you to sow in the plant into this anointing. I'm just telling you, the anointing, I'm, I'm so drunk in the spirit right now. <laughs> Whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. We trust God here. We trust God with the seed that we sow. I put my confidence in God. God is my source. God is our source. He will use resources or use people as resources, use things as resources. But always remember, trust God. He is the source of your supply. Your job is not your source. It's a resource. So let's honor God. And he'll know how to bring sufficiency and supply to you. There'll be some things you may have to obey in concepts and ideas and things he's told you to establish to funnel in increase and money into your house. Obey what God is telling you to do. Get a business plan, map it out, get help if you need it to execute the vision, the thing that you're seeing, how to get it done. It's okay to ask for help because you've sown and you've sown, but you've reaped little. God says, consider your ways. Sometimes it's not like a bad way. This may be a thing where you didn't implement some of the things that he told you, some of the strategies or you fail to step out and ask for help, knowing what he called you to do or what he told you to do to help supply that need. But because you didn't follow through with it, you're seeing the ramifications now because now there's a level of struggle that has taken place that didn't have to take place if you would obey in that season. But God is saying, don't beat yourself up. Begin to obey me from here and watch me begin to increase you from here. Be faithful. Whatever he tells you to give, honor God. Don't forget, we honor God with our tithe. That's the 10%, the top 10 off our increase, not as a command, but as a delight. Yes, I know under the law in Malachi, he told us to bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. But before the law was even implemented in the book of Genesis, Abram brought tithes of all to Melchizedek, who was the high priest, that Jesus is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. When we release that tithe unto him, there's a blessing that is released upon our lives because he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in high and heavenly places. We connect to that covenant of promise. And we thank God for it, that we give. Therefore, it is given to us again, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. God is our supply. Amen. So there's some opportunities, some, some ways that you can give and you can sow. And we thank God for you doing so. Hey, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed myself today. Glory to God. I pray that this word was a blessing to you today. I pray. And listen, when you give, don't just give what we used to call just bucket plucking. But you know, we don't have buckets right now. We got everything virtual. That when you just give, don't just give, but speak well over that seed. Speak life over that seed. Water that seed through the words, through your confession. Declare and decree that this grows. I receive hundredfold return over this seed sown there. That God will grant it to me witty inventions, ideas, concepts, avenues, streams of income that will bring supply, not just financially, but other things that need to manifest. Just like the widow woman when she sold into the prophet of God, not only did her and her house eat for an entire year, the Bible says too that when her son had died, the man of God was there and laid upon that child and prayed over that child. That child came to life again. Not only was she financially secure, but now healing and resurrection took place for her son who had fallen sick. See, your seed will meet every need. See, some of you are trying to get breakthrough in some areas but you're failing to sow and get involved with the, the laws of the kingdom of God. God said he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Don't you know the devourer is he who comes to steal, kill, and destroy? So even as a tither, the promise to a tither is for the enemy to be rebuked so devouring can't take place. 
not just in my money, but in my household, in my life, in my marriage, with my children. So you got to now enforce your covenant right. I have a right to this. In Jesus name. Praise God. Well, y'all, I'm out of time. Definitely not out of message, but I believe, I believe with you and I'm believing for you and I believe in you. So on behalf of my wife, Raquel and myself, we want to say thank you for joining us today. For we here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship are changing the culture, igniting a passion and living a dream. May God's grace and peace be upon you at all times. May everything work together for your good in Jesus name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. We love you so much. See you next time. Peace.